Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 10. If you have one property that brings the value and sense of community down for an entire neighborhood or for an entire block, you know, there's a cost to that. The city of Fargo is taking on dangerous homes with a new sense of urgency. Now rundown homes are being taken care of and quickly. This after a group of concerned citizens spoke up about the problem. Valley News Team's Veronica Marsha tells us more. People who own and invest in their homes and want to make that their, their life, their, their, their home, this, this is important for them that they know that they're not at risk by what's happening next to them or their own property values won't take a dive. Even if blight isn't in your neighborhood yet, it could be on the way. What happens in one neighborhood will soon happen in another neighborhood. And fixing these eyesores isn't just about how things look. City officials say it's also about safety. Vagrants who are breaking into the building and we don't know what they're doing. So we had to take action and take staff to go board up the home take actually take control of the home and that happened uh, several times and the building isn't safe it might be full of mold it might be full of who knows what contaminated in whatever ways it might be completely uninhabitable now the city is looking to go after homes it considers dangerous like this one on first avenue our inspections department and our code enforcement folks are really stepping up their game to the point where there isn't much leeway anymore. Either you fix up your, your property when you've been given notice or, or the consequences will unfold. The new focus on dilapidated homes comes after a push from the community. A lot of complaints from neighborhoods in regard to dilapidated properties and we're being a little uh, more strict about how quick we react to those complaints. If the home isn't brought up to city standards, it faces demolition. And since the cost of tearing down homes is paid for by taxpayers, the city says it would rather work with owners to fix their properties. The ultimate goal is to get that property repaired, fixed up, and or a new building to make the neighborhoods better. In Fargo, Veronica Marshall, Valley News Live. We've got more information about the Fargo Neighborhood Coalition attached to this story on our website, valleynewslive.com. The next time you stop for groceries along 13th Avenue South in Fargo, across from West Acres, you might also be able to grab a bottle of booze. Hornbachers is working to make that possible for you by trying to open a liquor store nearby their existing store. An application was approved by the City Commission tonight. It's only for the Village West location at 4101 13th Avenue. No word yet on when the new liquor store would begin. Fargo police are investigating a missing person report. Take a look at this picture on your screen. Family members say Derek Jacobs was last seen around 1.30 the morning of December 31st near his home on South University Drive. Police have confirmed that they are looking into the situation. If you have information on Jacobs, call Fargo police at 235-4493. Investigators are looking for the cause of a fire at a North Fargo apartment building. Crews were called out around 6 to the apartment just north of Ho Horace Mann Elementary School. They found a small fire in the attic. They were able to put it out quickly. No one was in the building, no, or no one in the building was hurt. Investigators say damage was limited and was minor. Police are investigating after a man drove his car into a ditch, but yet officials say his injuries are not from that crash. It happened shortly after 5 p.m. tonight near County Road 17 on 52nd Avenue in West Fargo. The highway patrol says the driver jumped an approach before going into a nearby ditch. Meanwhile, West Fargo police are working to figure out what happened before the crash that caused the man's injuries. Certainly not banana growing weather today, but okay compared to what it's been. Hutch, how low will our temps drop tonight? Well, we're heading back into the deep freeze after a reprieve, and we did actually manage to get up into the teens today, but those gusty north winds really have a bite to them tonight. A wind chill advisory for much of the Red River Valley of eastern North Dakota and much of northern Minnesota as we go through the overnight and early hours tomorrow. The only location below zero right now, Thief River Falls, but holding on to single digits elsewhere with winds gusting over 30 miles per hour. Wind chills are greater than 20 below across portions of the north. Now we'll rise and shine with air temperatures near 10 below for much of the area. Wind chills around 30 to 35 degrees below zero. So bundle up and get ready. We're going to spend the entirety of our Wednesday below zero. 
but there is a return of some warmth. I'll have details on when that arrives and what we can expect for the weekend ahead here in a moment. All right, thanks. Three people were hurt, including one with serious injuries after icy conditions sent a driver onto the other side of I-94. It happened just after 5 tonight. Troopers say 69-year-old James Mulfinger of Bismarck was driving east when his pickup slid across the median into the westbound lanes and crashed into an oncoming car. Mulfinger was cited for care required. The other driver and a 16-year-old passenger were treated for injuries. The crash caused a bit of a traffic jam while emergency crews cleared the road. Troopers say blowing snow formed glazed ice in the wheel track area of the interstate at the time of the crash. It's that time of year when the cold can create a major problem in your home by causing pipes to freeze and burst. Here's what you can do to make sure there are no problems. Experts say to always keep thermostats above 55 degrees and to keep all exterior doors closed, including garages. But officials say freezing pipes can also be prevented. Prevention is the best key, I guess, to uh, find out where those areas of pipes are that can be exposed to cold and prevent them from freezing. Sen adds that you can thaw pipes by using heating pads or space heaters, or you can always call a plumber. And if you're traveling during the cold weather, it's encouraged to have a neighbor check on your home and even run some water slowly through the faucet. And the cold weather has caused a restaurant to temporarily close. We were contacted through our whistleblower hotline from someone who says they work at Perkins in Moorhead. They say it got as cold as 20 degrees inside. According to Perkins, last Saturday, the restaurant started to have heat problems in the kitchen where the heater kept turning on and off. So they decided to close and are hoping to reopen tomorrow. A program to help people lose weight has a new ambassador who hopes you'll jump on board. Details later on Valley News Live at 10. Up next, there's new hope for reversing the effects of Alzheimer's disease with a diabetes drug.